Reasoning in Algebra and Geometry, an Introduction to Two-Column Proofs. A theorem is a true statement that follows as a result of other true statements. A two-column proof has numbered statements and reasons that show the logical order of an argument. These are some algebraic properties of equality that you learned before, but we're going to need to use them. Let A, B, and C be real numbers. The addition property of equality basically states that if you have A equal to B, then if you add a number to both sides of the equation, the equation is still true. The subtraction property also states that if you have a true equation, you can subtract the same number from both sides. Multiplication, you can multiply both sides by the same number. Division, as long as the number is not equal to zero, you could divide both sides of the equation by the same number and the equation is still true. The reflexive property states that for any number, that number is equal to itself. The symmetric property, for any two numbers, if A equals B, then B is also equal to A. The transitive property states that for any three numbers, if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Substitution is when you have a equal to b, then a can be replaced by b in any expression. Those properties of equality also carry over when we're talking about congruence. So we can use the reflexive property with congruent segments and congruent angles, the symmetric property with congruent segments and congruent angles, and the transitive property with congruent segments and congruent angles. Here we just want to work on some practice. So why don't you pause and try to match the statement with the property of equality. When you're finished, you can check back with me and see how you did. For number one, hopefully you got the transitive property. If the length of segment JK equals the length of segment PQ, and the length of segment PQ equals the length of segment ST, then the length of segment JK is equal to the length of segment ST. In number two, hopefully you got the addition property. We have the measure of angle S is equal to 30 degrees. And then if you add five degrees to the left side and the right side of the equation, it's still true. For number three, hopefully you got the subtraction property. If you look at the initial equation you're given, the way that this has changed in the conclusion is that the length of segment CD is missing from both sides which means that if you subtract the length of segment CD from both sides of the equation, the equation is still true. Number four, you should have gotten the reflexive property. The length of segment AB is equal to the length of segment AB. In number five, if x equals four and y equals x plus five, then y equals nine. So we took the value of x as four and substituted that in here in the second equation so that you have y equals 9. That's the substitution property. In number 6, if the measure of angle k is equal to 45 degrees, and then if you multiply both sides of the equation by 3, it is still a true equation using the multiplication property. And lastly, if the measure of angle p equals the measure of angle q, then the measure of angle q equals the measure of angle p. That's true using the symmetric property. Next, let's talk about some angle congruence theorem. The right angle congruence theorem states that all right angles are congruent. Since all right angles have an angle measure of 90 degrees, that makes all of their measures equal to each other. So all right angles are congruent. Congruent supplements theorem states that if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. That means that if we have this angle measuring 120 degrees, and I tell you that it's supplementary to angle A, but it's also supplementary to angle B, the measures of angle A has to equal the measure of angle B. Because if A is supplementary to this angle measuring 120, A has to equal 60 degrees. But if angle B is supplementary to the angle measuring 120, B has to be 60 degrees. Therefore, angle A and angle B are congruent. The congruent complements theorem follows the same idea. If two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. Here we have this angle measuring 10 degrees. If angle A is complementary to this angle, it would have to be 80 degrees. 
and if angle B is complementary to this angle, it would also have to be 80 degrees. Therefore, the two complements are congruent to each other. To begin our introduction into proofs, first, I want to solve this equation and state a reason for each step. The equation that we have here was given to us. And the first step we're going to take is to distribute the 3. So we have 12x minus 3 minus 8x equals 17. And we use the distributive property. Next, we want to combine like terms here. So 12x minus 8x gives us 4x minus 3 is equal to 17. Now our justification for it is we simplified. Next, we want to add 3 to both sides. So we get 4x is equal to 20. And that's using the addition property of equality. And then lastly, if we divide both sides by 4, we have x equals 5 using the division property of equality. So this is how we solve an equation for the unknown variable, and we give our justification for each step with the properties that we know. Now let's try that, except this time with the geometry problem. You're given this diagram, and you have angle AOM has a measure of 2x plus 30, and the measure of angle MOC is x. So first from the diagram, we're given that angle AOM and COM are a linear pair. And again, that's given to us from the diagram. Because they are a linear pair, we can say that angle AOM and angle COM are supplementary. And that's because linear pairs are supplementary. Then, we can say that the measure of angle AOM plus the measure of angle COM equals 180 because that's the definition of supplementary. That leads us to substitute our values. The measure of angle AOM is 2x plus 30 and the measure of angle COM is x. So again, we use substitution to get this equation. Next, we want to combine like terms so that we can solve for x so here we take 2x plus x to give us 3x, then plus 30 equals 180. And like we talked about before, this is simplifying. So to keep solving for x, we want to subtract 30 from both sides so that we have 3x equals 150 using the subtraction property of equality. And then lastly, divide both sides by 3 to get x equals 50, and that's the division property of equality. So we've worked out a problem solving for x and justifying our steps in algebra, and now I've shown you what it looks like in geometry. So we're going to take it one step further and start working on our two-column proofs. So for your two-column proofs, you're going to be given a statement that corresponds with the picture, and then you're going to have to prove the statement that they give you. So we need to go from angle 1 and angle 3 being vertical to the fact that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. So you start off with the statement that you're given. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles, and we know that's true because it was given to us. Then, using the diagram, we can say that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary, and also that angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary because linear pairs are supplementary. Then, if we know that those pairs of angles are supplementary, that means that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180, and the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180. So we can transfer these statements into mathematical equations because that is the definition of supplementary angles, that their measures add up to equal 180 degrees. So this time, for number four, we have to fill in a statement, and we're given the reason. So that means, based off of what we've already stated in steps one through three, we're going to use the transitive property of equality to make a statement for number four. So the transitive property of equality, we're going to have to use either congruent statements or equations. The only equations that we have are in step three. So remember, the transitive property of equality states that if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. 
So here we have the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals 180, and the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180. Since both of these equal the same thing, the transitive property of equality lets us say that those are equal to each other. So we can say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. Next, we need to use the subtraction property of equality to make statement number 5. So subtraction property of equality lets you subtract the same value from both sides of the equal sign so that the equation remains true. Now, in step number 4, you see this equation and you'll see that the measure of angle 2 is on both sides. Since that's going to have the same value, we can subtract that from both sides, and then we would be left with the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And then lastly, how do we get from the measure of angle 1 equaling the measure of angle 3 to saying that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3? That's the definition of congruence. Segments are congruent when their measures are equal to each other. So this is how you complete a two-column proof when you're given a fill-in-the-blank with the word bank. I'll see you in class for more practice with proofs.